Hi, welcome to lesson number five, practical. It's about multiple alignments and then we will follow also to lesson number six connected to phylogeny. In the beginning, you have to go and pick up the files to use. So you get into the files and then if you want to perform the multiple alignment, you will perform a multiple align with protein sequences that are all together. So you have the file in here downloaded and you can save it in a place you know it. So you can just place it and a desktop so you can go and access it easily. It is most of the times it's called or the name of the protein and in plural because you will have to save several proteins or several genes. Most of the time several genes are too big to perform with these softwares that you will use for multiple alignment but most of the times you compare transcripts. So you, now that you have your, your sequences, you can go and perform the, your multiple alignment. One of the softwares that you can use to do a multiple alignment can be Clustal. Clustal, you can download it using the instructions that you have on your written work. To perform the multiple alignment, after having installed Clustal Sheesh, you can go and load the sequences. You load all the sequence once. So you will use TPP, proteins, you will align proteins. The file must be on FASTA format as you already learned and faster format, you should edit the name of each sequences. So I called HSAP TBP1, it's Homo sapiens TBP1 and TBP2, the, the two uh, isoforms for this protein coming from the true transcripts you already um, met. And then the mouse, uh, sequence, mus musculus, ratos norvegicos from red TBP, the chicken TBP, galus galus, drosophila melanogaster, the fruit fly TBP, and the new head TBP that is from zebra fish. So you have the two isoforms of the main protein that you are analyzing and the orthologs that you just had picked, probably using BLAST or something, some other tool for example, from GeneCards database on orthologs section. Now you will perform the complete alignment, but you should first set the alignment parameters. So the alignment parameters should be selected for multiple alignment and in multiple alignment parameters you can choose the gap opening penalty, the gap extension penalty. Most of the times it is tenfold difference. So this time we will use as default, but if it would be tenfold, it will be uh, 10 and one gap extension, but as much as possible gap extension should be very low in order to get a good alignment with all the extension of the sequences. Then you will choose the weight matrix or the score matrix, the substitution matrix for alignment with proteins. If you want to follow to a phylogeny, you should select PAM, point accepted mutation series. Otherwise, if you want to take a look to the conserved domains of the proteins, you should select Blossom. In this exercise, you are looking to continue to phylogeny, so this time you will select PAM series. You will check OK and then you can also select the output format. The output format 
is always by default selected clue style. Once you want to continue and proceed to phylogeny, you must select Philip format because the software you will use here to perform the phylogeny called Mega, you will need as input a Philip format. Now you can also add the sequence numbers and the output order can be the aligned or the input you decided. And the input is keeping your human sequences on the top. And then you say OK and now you will really perform the multiple alignment. It may take more or less time. It will save your sequences in the same place you went to pick up your uh, fast format sequences. And then it saves a ILN clue style format and a fee Philip format in the same place. If you want to change it, you can change it. Otherwise, uh, you lose it and you need to know exactly where this file is to follow up to phylogeny. It may take more or less time. If you have longer sequences, it takes more time. If you have shorter sequences, you have less time waiting. These are short sequences. You can check the length of the sequences. It's like 350. And you have signed with an asterisk the conserved, absolutely conserved, with maximum identity sequences. If you you have signed with double dot the non-identical, the similar sequences, and this similarity is double dot because all these amino acids I v and V or R and K are between the same group of amino acids. When the amino acids don't belong to the same group, the semi-conservative similarity is signed with one dot. So T and K are not from the same group. You also have sequences that are longer, like Drosophila melanogasters, so there are introduced gaps in the other sequences. You can check here the conserved and repeated glutamine and is highly conserved those repetitions but smaller in um, less uh, evolved um, organisms like for example um, drosophila zebrafish and also until the mammals we don't know the other primates if we want to to had, we should have like chimpanzee to compare. In here, you can see that the alignment of the first metunin in the second isoform, it doesn't start in the beginning. So this is not, not the perfect uh, alignment. It's the optimal uh, obtained with the best score. Not always is the corresponding to reality. We also have high conservative glutamate not conserved in Drosophila melanogaster, although those glutamates must exist and they exist here so the protein can perform the same function. Now that you check the multiple alignment, you can go and observe the multiple alignment in different forms. For example, using weblogo, if you want to light out the identical uh, areas of the alignment. Otherwise, you just want to see the relations between the organisms so you can follow to phylogeny. Phylogeny is the object of study in lesson number six. The practical exercise is based on the software MEGA. MEGA can start using a alignment file or you can use also a distant matrix. If you want, you can perform opening the file and you will upload 
the file from the TBP proteins, the Philip file. Now you upload and you have a second window with the alignment open. Here you can check that you have a different type of um, file. You have seven sequences and then a, a space and then the full length of the alignment. You have only one time the name of your sequences and then you have blocks of the alignment all with the same size until the end. And here you must convert the file into from Philip format to mega format. You have by default it selects Philip because it recognizes and you only need to say OK. Then you should check if the, the conversion will be correct. I will call it once again TBP proteins and I will save it on desktop but now in mega format. It is converted and mega format has a cardinal and then the name of the sequence and then the full length of the sequence keeping the alignment gaps as you can see and then you have all seven sequences. You should check if they get the same size. Sometimes there are mistakes in converting one file to the other and then it gives an error. Okay, you have your file saved and now you can perform your phylogeny. You can construct using different methods. Maximum likelihood that is based on characters or a distance based called neighbor joining or minimum evolution. You also have UPGMEA distant based or maximum parsimony as maximum likelihood based on characters. Maximum parsimony and maximum likelihood, they're more expensive in computing. Neighbor joining is more common as also PGMEA that is more um, computer light. So we will use neighbor joining. We will select our sequences from desktop, the TBP protein, now at mega file. And we have to say which sequences are. We're not using nucleotide sequences, neither pairwise distance. We're using protein sequences. Then you say OK, it computes, and it asks you once again to select. The statistical method is neighbor joining as you chose, and you may test phylogeny using different statistics um, phylogeny tests. The most common used is bootstrap, and you should select not more than 1000 but you can give 500 as a number of bootstrap. It will construct 500 trees and uh, ensure each node, each uh, um, branch of the tree to validate, statistically validate your tree. And then you compute and wait most of the times your tree is pretty quick to get and then after getting you have the original tree with these numbers that are the statistical validation for each node of your tree. The only statistical not significant is this one and uh, because the cutoff is mainly 70 because 70, you have 95% sure that these branches are correctly um, placed. So you have the two isoforms from uh, Homo sapiens, the closest to each other. They have no distance from, uh, from each other. Then you have a common ancestor to those other mammals and the other mammals are rat and mouse. And then you have a common ancestor with the chicken, the birds, common ancestor with all mammals. And then you have a common ancestor 
pretty far with the fish that is represented by Daniel Redu, the zebrafish TBP, and even far from the ancestor uh, with um, the insects like Drosophila melanogaster, the fruit fly. You can also see these three in different formats or if you you can change if you didn't get Homo sapiens on the top of your tree you should change it in order to place it here and you can choose different um, tools to perform it. You can also see the tree in different styles like in the top ontology and then you you can check with different different aspects the traditional rectangular straight circle and it all depends on the way you want to show it and represent it sometimes it's easier to understand like this way in this in our case it's better the rectangular and traditional one you can change some other tree parameters okay you can scale it out you can place cut off values differently and you always return to your original this is rectangular this is traditional and the original tree you can always get it okay So this way mainly represents equal distance, but it maintains the uh, representation of close related Homo sapiens with a common ancestor to other mammals and to ch uh, birds with chicken representing and so on. So you can have different ways of presenting your tree and you can display also the uh, branch sizes and you have here there is no distance between the two TBPs from Homo sapiens um, isoforms and you have uh, no different or a slight different between uh, both um, rodents okay and then you have a long distance to Drosophila melanogaster this is the way you can choose to relate organisms or if you have different proteins you can relate the proteins and check a protein in study if they are if it is closest to certain function compared to others this is a way to relate sequences to improve and to ensure these relations are correct, you have to look into history and to evolution. Thanks for your attention. Meet you soon in other practical or theoretical class.